What's up guys and welcome to this video. A few weeks ago I got my hands on the LG UC97 curved ultra wide monitor and it was without a doubt one of the best monitors I have ever used. If you haven't seen this review you can find it, it is a card and it'll be the little eye thing somewhere around here. But the main real problem that I had with it was just that it was a bit too expensive for the average consumer. And there's always another option, but that option isn't always the best one, although sometimes they are a little bit cheaper. So I did some research for a cheaper alternative, and then this is what I came up with, this one right here. It's an AOC monitor, you can find the full model number here, and it is just that. It's essentially the same, it isn't curved, that's the main difference, but it is between 200 and 300 pounds cheaper. So is this a better alternative or is it just a cheaper alternative? On paper, this monitor does look very good. It has a resolution of 3440 by 1440. This is all in a large ultra wide 34 inch size. So it essentially is like having two 1440p monitors kind of sandwiched together. Well, about maybe one and a half or slightly less. So you get a lot more screen real estate without having to have multi monitors and have the hassle of extra things like extra cables um, and extra bezels and things like that. It's just one nice large screen. Because it's not curved, the edges can kind of feel like they're slightly too far away because it's such a large monitor. But again, it's a lot cheaper than a curved monitor is, so this is definitely um, not really a massive deal for people. It uses an IPS panel, so colors are gonna be fantastic, and it has a 60 hertz refresh rate. Getting this thing out of the box and assembled is just as easy as it normally is with monitors. I'm yet to come across one that's particularly difficult. This one uses the approach of get a screwdriver, few a screw a few screws together, and then you essentially are attaching the stand to the monitor itself. Once it's out of the box, the whole thing looks very good. The materials are nice and solid and they look very expensive, even though they probably aren't. You do get a slight bit of wobble, but nothing really out of the ordinary, maybe not quite as good as some others I've seen, but again, this really isn't an issue. The bezels on the monitor do a very good job of looking smaller than they are. I'm not entirely sure how they do this, but it does look very, very good. The only real problem that I have with the stand is that the cable management is pretty poor. Now this is for two reasons. Firstly, um, the actual uh, connections on the back of the monitor are too low down, which means uh, we have these cables here that kind of hang down and there's not really anything we can do with them and this is actually one of the first monitors that I've had this problem with which is a shame uh, maybe it can be revised in uh, you know next year's model um, and I'd like to see that but if you're not the sort of person that really cares about having these things hanging down it's not going to bother you and it only bothered me for about a week obviously if um, it's a really good monitor that's not really a big price to pay for having a good monitor and then the other reason for it was just that the cable management routing hole thing on the back of the monitor is too low down. So it means that you're directly tucking the monitors around the back rather than if you had it at the top, you could kind of curve the um, cables around the top and so you wouldn't see them as much. But like I say, it's not really a big deal. Now, connections wise, we have four connections. We have one display port, we have one DVI, one VGA, and one HDMI with the mobile high definition link, I believe is what it's called. We've also got a USB hub as well. We've got one HDMI, one HDMI, one USB 3 in, and then we have one USB 3 out. We have one USB charger out, and two USB 2 out. So if you want to plug something in USB, this is a great way of doing it, and it's a nicely positioned on the right-hand side of the monitor for easy access. One of the ones on the LG particularly is that the uh, USB ports are around the back and underneath, so they're just really hard to get to. So if they're on the side, it means you're going to easily be able to access them. So these are some USB ports I might actually use on a monitor, which is good. Once you get this thing turned on, immediately out of the box, it does look pretty fantastic. That IPS panel, it's difficult to say it's because I can't directly compare them. I don't have both this and the LG in the building at the same time, but the colors are remarkably similar, and I'm sure the LG colors probably are slightly better, but literally you'd be really hard pressed to notice. The colors on this thing are fantastic, even before calibration. If you do want to calibrate it, it is pretty simple to do. We've got buttons underneath, which are good because they're buttons, not great because they're not great buttons. This combined with a pretty ugly and pretty unintuitive uh, user eye, user eye, user interface, 
means that the whole calibrating experience isn't brilliant, but you only really have to do it once. So it's not a major deal, but there are definitely a lot nicer calibration bits of software out there. But what is this thing actually like to use? Well, I'll do my usual three sections, gaming performance, general performance, and productivity performance. And we'll start, as always, with the general performance. And the general performance is very, very good. Because the resolution is very high without being stupidly high, it's not particularly difficult to drive. And the IPS panel means that the whole thing looks good no matter what we're doing. We have the usual problems with ultra-wide monitors where if you're using an internet browser, then it's too wide. But again, this can easily, easily be fixed by essentially using it as two monitors by dragging windows to the left or to the right and then having two sort of windows side by side. If you want to do anything particularly special on this monitor, like watch videos, then the video performance is great. If you want to watch particularly high resolution 1440p videos on YouTube, again, they look very good. But if you're only watching 16.9 videos, you're going to get the black bars. And the black bars, of course, are a problem that you don't get on a normal 16.9 monitor. So pick your poison. Do you want black bars when you're watching widescreen content, or do you want black bars when you're watching normal content. Up to you. Moving on to productivity performance, and it's still very good news. I do a lot of photo editing, I do a lot of video editing. Both of these excel on this monitor. There are quite a few situations that I would still rather have two monitors for, especially for something like photo editing. But this is certainly a lot better than just having one normal sized monitor. Color accuracy is brilliant. Um, I don't have a reading to give you, but it's more or less 100% of the sRGB from what I can tell and what I managed to work out from other people's reviews. But the whole thing looks fantastic and it's great to be able to see your photos in a high enough resolution while having still great colour accuracy that you're just not going to get on something like a gaming monitor or just any general TN monitor. If you want to do something like video editing, again, it's great to have the ultra-wide aspect ratio because you can get a large timeline while still having a large preview at the top of the page. If you want to do anything else, if you wanted to do icon creation, web creation, anything like that, then again, having two small windows side by side is brilliant, but I would probably still take two monitors for this. Gaming performance though is just short, nothing short of spectacular. I'm not a massive fan of not having a curved ultra-wide monitor because the corners do seem quite far away but this is definitely less pronounced when it comes to games and having just a wider field of view is most excellent. Still not going to be my first choice for first person shooters. The games do feel pretty responsive. This is a five millisecond response time, but I would still rather have a higher refresh rate monitor for games. But if we want to play any sort of regular game, so something like Tropico 5 excels on this monitor, or a racing game excels on this monitor, it's only really first person shooters that I would kind of prefer to play on something else. It's definitely a great experience and it's an experience that is available at a much better price point than some of the other competition. So then, it's conclusion time. This is not the best monitor you can buy. In fact, it's not the best ultra wide monitor you can buy. But to be honest, from what I can tell, it probably is the ultra wide monitor you should buy. It's available at a very good price. It's pretty amazing when it comes to picture quality. The whole thing looks good and it's got very few flaws. All available at a brilliant price. Granted, I probably wouldn't buy this monitor because I like to have two monitors. But if you are after a single ultra wide monitor, then this probably is the one you should go for. And that is why this monitor wins the top purchase award because quite simply, it probably is the monitor you should go for and it is a top purchase. So thank you so much for watching this video as always. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't. That obviously helps me out a lot and it lets other people know that this is a video worth watching. Subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this, as well as other product reviews and all sorts of good videos coming very soon. If you have any questions, leave your comments below. Do you like the video? Do you like the product? Do you not like the video? Do you not like the product? Or if you just have anything else to say. If you want to ask me a question, then your best bet is Twitter. Just hit me up at PCCentric on Twitter. And then it literally is a case of me just... Hold on a second, I've, just... I've got a tweet, hold on. Yeah, um, so where were we? Literally is that simple. Best place to do it. It's sometimes quite difficult for me to fish through all the comments um, to reply to direct queries. So if you do it on Twitter, I'm going to get it directly and it is going to be the easiest way for me to reply to you. 
So thank you so much for watching this video. Like I say, like, subscribe, not dislike unless you disliked it and all that jazz. And I will see you in the next video.